Hi everyone. Today we will see about pulmonary artery hypertension, PAH. It's a high blood pressure in the arteries which are going to the lungs. Normally compared with the rest of the body, the blood pressure in these arteries is much lower. That is uh, 25 by 10 mmHg. If it is exceeds about 40 by 20 mmHg or mean arterial pressure greater than 25 mmHg, that is called PAH. If it is persist and become much higher, the RV function of the heart will be compromised and the patient will feel uh, symptoms like uh, SOB, tiredness, weakness, etc. Many of the diseases and conditions are affecting uh, pulmonary uh, blood pressure. Let's see some more details. Next we will see classification of pulmonary artery hypertension. There are five groups divided according to the cause. Let's see group 1. Group 1 pulmonary artery hypertension. It includes pH associated with the narrowing of blood vessels in the lungs. The real reason is unknown. There are other multiple subgroups in group 1. are hereditary and the pH is caused by uh, drugs and the toxins. pH associated with the other conditions like uh, connective tissue diseases, congenital heart problems and HIV. Group 1 also may be caused by uh, rare conditions like uh, pulmonary veno occlusive disease and pulmonary capillary hemangiomatosis. Group 2 Pulmonary hypertension uh, due to left side heart disease. The long term problem with the left side of the heart can lead to changes in the pulmonary capillaries and cause pulmonary hypertension. This may include LV dysfunction and valvular disease. Group 3 the pH due to lung disorder or chronic hypoxia. The common diseases associated with this are COPD, interstitial lung diseases, sleep apnea, chronic exposure to the high altitude, congenital lung problems, and uh, alveolar hypoventilation issues. Group 4, pH due to uh, blood clots or thrombus, otherwise known as chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. Group 5, uh, let's say miscellaneous. The pH due to blood and other disorders. This is the last category and includes the less common causes that, are, that does not fit in any other groups. Uh, this is widely divided into four categories. The first one is blood disorders, uh, such as some type of anemia. The second one is systemic disorder, such as sarcoidosis, which results in inflammation of the organs, and histiocytosis, which results in scarring. The third one is metabolic disorder. The fourth one is other conditions like uh, CKD and, in, and uh, tumors resulting uh, obstruction in the pulmonary arteries. Here is the signs and symptoms of pulmonary hypertension. Bluish lips or skin, chest pain or angina, fluttering chest sensation, shortness of breath, fatigue or weakness, tiredness, loss of consciousness or syncope, dry coughing, abdominal bloating, rapid weight gain, swollen angles or legs. Uh, some other signs include we have to look for exercise induced nausea and vomiting, ascites, jugular venous distension, hepatomegaly, hemoptysis, hoarseness of voice, prominent death to sound, cardiac murmur and cool extremities. The WHO divided the patient with the pulmonary hypertension into four classes according to their functional screening. The class one the pulmonary hypertension does not cause any symptoms uh, while doing their regular activities. Uh, class 2, it has a mild limit, uh, but the patient will be comfortable at rest and the patient may experience mild uh, limitations in their uh, regular activities. Class 3, it has a marked or noticeable limits and the patients will be uh, comfortable at rest. However, the patient cannot do the regular activities properly. Class 4, it has severe limits. The patient cannot do any physical activities and may have symptoms while resting also. Next, you will see the investigations for ruling out pulmonary hypertension. The first one is transthoracic echo, right heart catheterization, chest x-ray, CT scan and uh, ultrasound abdomen, and pulmonary function test, blood studies like ABG, CBC electrolytes and uh, uh, RFTs, LFTs, and the serology studies and acute vasodilatory testing. Then the management. 
It includes pharmacological and the physical therapy management. First one is pharmacological. It includes specific and non-specific agents. Here are the non-specific and specific agents for pulmonary hypertension. Non-specific agents include anticoagulants, diuretics, supplementary oxygen, digoxin, and calcium channel blocker. Specific agents include prostanoids, endothelin receptor ag antagonist, phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor, soluble granulate cyclase stimulant, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and prostacycline receptor agonist. Second one is physical activity or exercises. Two types of exercise recommendations are home based program and inpatient programs. The outcome from these programs are Increase in life expectancy, decrease in the healthcare cost, decrease in WHO uh, functional class, uh, improvement in uh, functional uh, the skeletal muscle functions, and uh, improvement in peak oxygen consumption, improvement in uh, the quality of life. So the proper diagnosis and uh, finding out the underlying cause has made a role in treatment of pulmonary artery hypertension. I hope you enjoy my class. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.